Hi, this is Morgan Dreamus with RT Book Reviews, and I'm here today with Kristen Ashley, who, as you all know, anybody that follows the RT blog knows that she's one of my favorite, favorite uh, romance authors. Your contemporaries are, I just, I, I can't even, I can't even start. Like, I, I know I told you I'd be professional, but I'm just gonna <laughs> fangirl out here, because honestly, you write characters who, on, if, if somebody would told me you're going to absolutely fall in love and your favorite hero is going to be some badass biker dude <laughs> who calls his, his girlfriend his old lady, who like I would have I said, you're crazy. I that's not my style. But there's something about the way that you write that is so all-consuming. You can't put your books down. Oh, wow. Thank you very much. And of course, when, when I talk about the badass biker dude, I'm talking Tack Allen yes, from Motorcycle Man. He's the one. He's, he's the gateway drug into the <laughs> Ashley world. Right. Yes. <laughs> um, so tell me, tell me, Tack. Like I said, he he was born into um, a, a motorcycle club. It's all that he's ever known his yeah. whole life. Yeah. Um, what about him makes him uh, like heroic? Because he could very well go the other way. He could he could be a criminal. He could kind of go the other way because it is a really rough world that he lives in. Yeah. But you made him heroic. What is it for you about him that elevates him to hero? Well, I, I think that um, he. There are people that are that are very, very good at following, and, and they're good at that. And then there are people that are leaders, and, um, and in that world, leading is quite the battle. And so, and he was a leader, and um, and he he wanted to make sweeping change, you know. So he was like in a in a war zone essentially in their world to to make a better life for his family. And any soldier is is wanting to make a better life for his family to to keep his family and his home safe. And it's just in a different world where he's doing that. So essentially, he's a soldier fighting for a better life for his for his people mm -hmm. and um, so that I think that's makes him hero heroic to me because he it was against all the odds and it could get ugly and it did get ugly <laughs> it, it does and it gets, it gets yeah. very ugly yeah. because they and are he's they fighting are his brothers as well as yep. fighting outside forces mm -hmm. and uh, there's a lot of ways to give up on that a lot of, okay this is a good enough life I've got money in my pocket you know I'm with my family and mm -hmm. you know we'll be all right and he didn't he had a vision about what he wanted to do and he I love how the, the, the Chaos Motorcycle Club, they are, like you said, their family. They call each other brothers, and that's really what they have. They might not be blood brothers, but they are so connected, and there's such loyalty there mm -hmm. that when you look at it, you're like, that's why you want to be a part of it. Not because of the, you know, the, the bikers and the drinking and the women and everything. Yeah. That's kind of, you know, it can get unsavory sometimes. Yeah. But when you see the loyalty that they have towards each other, yeah. it's like, who wouldn't want to just, like, I need a map to the, the ride combat so I can just go and just hang out <laughs> with, with all of your characters. Because yeah. there is there there is that, that tight-knit group. And yeah. It's really Well, great. in all my books, um, uh, you'll see that... Well, I don't know. What, I don't want to say all, but I do really think all of it because family to me is the most important part of my life. You know, mm -hmm. and my family doesn't include just the people that share my name or share blood. I have created a very large family of, of sisters of the heart, brothers of the heart, and mm -hmm. and I, I like to explore that in my books. You know, it's not just the hero and heroine getting together. It's all of the people around them that build this unit of this solid unit. And I just did it in a motorcycle club with with that book. Okay, so there's there's a lot of firsts for you. There's a first time you self-pubbed one of your books. Right. There's a first time you made a bestseller list. There's a first time you got that call from a big six. You know, you, you write for Grand Central now. Yeah. There's there's all these firsts for you. When you think back through your career and how you've built it, um, what is a first for you that really stands out as being one of those moments? Well, I in the beginning, I quit my job. To, you know, I've been writing for 10 years, uh, now 12. And um, I quit my job to focus on doing this. To, you know, I gave myself two years. I living on ramen noodles right. <laughs> and soup. You know, and you know, uh, if you put ketchup in hot water, that's considered tomato <laughs> soup, right? I, I wish I'd thought of that. <laughs> you know, I was living in England at the time, and I was like, well, I, I can eat for three pounds tonight. You know, <laughs> budgeting every, and and you it, you obsessively check how many sales you make. And I would, you know, I would sell no books a day or one book I would be excited about. And then um, one day I sold 15 books. And um, and there was just something that just told me something happened, mm -hmm. and um, um, and then it, it, I went down to eight books like three days um, after that, but I never sold less than that from that point on, and it, and that was the kind of like I'm actually going to live this dream. That was like that moment. I could still see myself sitting, you know, opening up the you know the spreadsheet and seeing 15 books and and just thinking this this might actually work. So. 
that was the and that's not to say any of the other parts of right. it weren't phenomenal it was just that you know I had taken this huge risk mm-hmm. and that actually might happen <laughs> so yay yeah, yeah. well a lot of people they have to wait um, many many years to to have like the tagline like I know Susan Elizabeth Phillips she's SEP and when you say it everyone knows Nora Roberts you say the Nora everyone in the romance world knows who that is online your KA and when you say <laughs> K like, like everyone knows and and it was really it, it you become this phenomenon where I, I read motorcycle man was my was my first book I read of yours and I gave it to my sister and she gave it to our other two sisters and they gave it to, and and you're just once once you start like and and all over Twitter and all over Facebook Book, you are such a presence. You, you know, you got your KA fangirls, your rock chicks <laughs> yeah, that, that yeah, follow yeah, you. Yeah. What is it like to know that so many fans follow you and, and they love the worlds that you create so much that they want to, to be a part of that? Well, I, I actually, t- to be entirely, I'm pretty clueless. <laughs> <laughs> I live in my own world and it's a dream world. <laughs> and um, I, I didn't, um, that was just another family I was building, you know? And so, um, so uh, to me, it was just like chitter chattering with, with my girls. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until um, I went to the book bash in Orlando that I I realized that this that that people that it was a phenomenon yeah. you know I, I I kind of focus on what I'm doing because I want to write and I want to connect so I have these places where I connect with people but I just see the same folks over and over again and chat with them so it didn't really hit me until I'd look up from my desk and I would see that people can you know somebody flew from South Africa somebody flew from England and that's a huge thing and I'm a crier so I'm, I'm like <laughs> deep breathing signing books deep breathing because <laughs> it, it, yeah so I guess and I guess that's good because you can keep grounded that way you know but and they people like my that this is what I do and I love what I do and I pour my heart in what I do and so the fact that their heart is in it as well that makes us a, a family my family of rock chicks <laughs> all over the place all over the place let's talk about your newest series and that's the chaos series now you started it out um, and obvi- we, ha- we have characters from the dream the dream man series um, you brought in shy and tabby who we had met before mm-hmm. when you when you first started out with own the wind they're very young yes. and that surprised me because you oftentimes in your novels you you write you know 30 year olds 40 year olds right. um, but in this novel you started them out very young um, but you did such a great thing which is in the first maybe 50 pages they they mature and they progress quite a few years mm-hmm. and some really hard things happen during those years yeah, Tabby yeah. actually loses a fiance that she loves yeah. tremendously very unexpectedly yeah. and I'm crying during these scenes <laughs> and shy is like shy you gotta get it you gotta help you gotta, but, but it's just not quite right but but you really you really encapsulate their relationship in a very in a in a way where I think everybody can really understand where they come from. So when the romance, when when you know they start the romance and they start that type of relationship, it just is that much bigger and better. Was it hard for you to get into their younger mind and have them progress through so many years, or was that a natural thing for you to do? It wasn't natural, no, because mm-hmm. you know I'm I'm of a certain age, so obviously my mindset is people in their 30s and 40s because I remember that better, <laughs> and I was a little bit out there when I was in my <laughs> 20s you know so I couldn't imagine finding my soulmate back then but I like to take risks and I like to challenge myself and do different things and one of the other things that um, I liked about Tabby and Shy was that you know she did she that was a rough go that prologue is quite you know oh, that, that was it, it, very rough for her yeah. and even rough for him but we didn't quite know what, where he was coming from but um, what I liked best about it was that they built a friendship first and I don't know if I've ever done that in any novels and it I was, was going to say because a lot of your other ones they wake up after a one night yeah, 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 and it's yeah, there, it's like, ready to. <laughs> <laughs> We're starting with a bang. <laughs> no pun intended. But um, but yeah, it, um, yeah. So that was really neat for me to, mm-hmm. and I actually almost like that part of the book better than any part of the book because to to watch them grow close, mm-hmm. knowing in the back of your head where that's going, yeah. and and especially with her in that part of her life, mm-hmm. it really defines his character that he will take her, that that he feels so much for her, he will take her however he can get her. And if it's friendship, that's what he'll take. And that was, and, and he'll do anything for her. And that was really what, wonderful to explore. One of the things that makes Shy a little bit different is he wasn't necessarily born into the motorcycle club lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Um, he he w- kind of w- was brought in and found them after a very rough 
right. you know, rough time. And so for him, he's a little less, he, he's a little more open to she's going to make her own decisions. A lot of the other, a lot of the other brothers, they're kind of like, I'm going to, you know, Tack was one of them, I'm going to put my foot down, this is the way it's going to be. Yeah. And, 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 you know, you get, you get the very alpha, this is what's going to be. And, and Shai was able to kind of say, you know what, this is her decision. She yeah. gets, she gets to decide where her life goes. And yeah. even when he's questioned from the other brothers of, you better not hurt her and you better take care of her. And he's like, yeah. she's an adult and yeah. she knows her mind. And I really, I liked that about him yeah. because he could still be alpha and kind of that take charge kind of guy, but be very, very thoughtful of what, what Tabby needed and wanted. And yeah. I was like, oh, just one more reason to yeah. love. <laughs> he was, he was really, that actually surprised me when that scene mm -hmm. comes up where the brothers, he's with the brothers and she's standing at his back and all that's getting very, very heated. Intense. And, and he essentially says, you know, they're telling him to tell her to shut up or whatever. And yeah. he's like, no, I'm not going to do that. You know, I, I, I asked her to leave and she didn't want to. So I'll, that, that's the way. He but then that. we turn yeah. around and there, something comes to that, that might possibly harm her. And he's, he's the first one there. Mm -hmm. So I really like that dichotomy of, mm -hmm. of, of, of support in two different ways. It was really neat to see how he how he could he could be the alpha protector as well as, you know, be her man and be, you know, stand beside her and let her be her own woman. So not let her, but that's where they are. Uh, yeah. That was the Respect partnership. her as yeah. as a woman. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now the, in the next book, you went um, Lainey, who is a character that we've been following. Um, and this is Fire Inside. Mm -hmm. And we've been following her character. And I don't want to say that she... I don't, how would it, she's she's crazy in a great way I guess she's, she's kind of queen. all over the place yeah, and yeah. and you're you're wondering how is she gonna pull this together to make a romance happen and you do you put her with Hop and right. Hop has had his own experiences with women he's kind of been he's been burned by love before yes. so at first when they when they kind of get together and they're kind of playing around it's very like hey, we'll, we'll hang out for a week see what happens you know yeah. whatever very casual and yeah. it very soon becomes not so casual right. it becomes very intense very quickly Right. for these two characters right. and in this book what I loved about it is Lainey is her own person she's like no other no other character you'll ever read about and he just kind of sits back and just lets her just yeah. let it hang like you said let it all hang out yeah. just let it all hang out yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, and so she, and so, like, what was what was it like to write her character, which is just so different? Well, the, the, when I for um, when Hop came to me in Motorcycle Man, <clears throat> I knew his story. You know, I knew what was going on in the background, so I was very, very keen to tell it. What I didn't know was that he would he would end up with Lainey. I didn't actually think Lainey was going to get her own book, but as I was, um, she moved to the East Coast. She yeah, was out she, of the picture. Yeah, yeah right? she was gone, but I, she troubled me. You know, what happened to her in Motorcycle Man was very intense. And I just couldn't imagine that Tyra would let her just sit there and fester and, mm -hmm. and, um, and without bringing her into the fold. Um, so when, when it hit me that they could, you know, get together, it just exploded in my head. And, and what I liked about her is that she, you know, she gets excited about her 7-Up fizzing over. And yet she's a very grounded, successful, ambitious, powerful woman in her mm -hmm. professionalism. She doesn't care what anybody thinks about her. And, and on the surface, I, I explore a lot of this in my books too. No, never judge a book by its cover. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there's so much deep happening um, and and so I really liked both of them were very surface in Motorcycle Man and mm -hmm. you could make very quick judgments about them and they were a, a surprise I hope to readers when they, well, when they when read you, Fire just, Inside. Just the visual you get of him he has you know the facial hair and the leather and you know he's this big guy yeah. Hop is just a man's man yeah. and then she you know Lainey wears the Italian leather boots yeah. and, the, and she, she gets yeah. dressed up and she her hair is always yeah. immaculate and, it, yeah. and so just even the visual of them is like how's that gonna work but then it does <laughs> Yeah. because they allow themselves to be you know they have faults and it's like that's okay because I love you I love you not you know yeah. in spite of them but because of them because right. and, and I think Tyrus is the best at a certain point in her novel when she's like you're not the perfect man attack you're perfect for me right. and right. that's what your characters have they might not be perfect yeah. but for each other yeah. it works yeah. before I find out what's going on next in the chaos series I have to tell you one of the things that draws me in so much to your writing is you have these these big burly men who are who are they they drink beer and they go riding on their hogs and they do all these things and then every once in a while they open their heart and they say a line to their heroine and they let her know what they're feeling and you have to stop because your your heart just 
you can't even you can't even stand it as a reader you're like I've never heard anything so romantic and coming from a biker <laughs> so unexpected when you write those scenes and I know we, in, in every book we have them that moment where your hero opens up and says you are the woman you make me better you make me want to to do things you make me want to have a family those moments what is it like for you um, well as a romance reader from very very young age those were my moments too you know when, whenever you get to that moment in the book that's the that's you know that's it that's why you read <laughs> that's those why books, you, read it. <laughs> you know it could be about the sex and the clothes and all the different places that they live and you know all that thing but it's just that where it gets you right in the gut you know really your heart does. squeezes so it happens for me too you know when I when I write it and because I I don't plot and I don't outline anything um, it happens to me like it happens to you when you read it I don't know when it's coming and I don't know what they're going to say and so yeah the same thing happens I cry a lot when I write <laughs> well, we cry a lot when we read so we're even <laughs> good that means I'm doing my job right <laughs> okay so so now I want to end off with what we can expect from you next because I know your readers are like if they could tie you down chain you to your desk and be just just keep writing we would we would totally do it I would actually totally do that because <laughs> <laughs> I love writing so yeah that would not be a hardship but um, what's next for me um, um, is uh, I'm doing the Colorado we're bouncing to the Colorado Mountain series so mm -hmm. we're we're continuing on with um, j um, Jagged and Kaleidoscope and um, and we're going back to Gnawbone so Gnawbone was um, introduced in um, um, the gamble. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see a little bit what's happening with Nina and Max, and then um, and then the Kaleidoscope is Deck and Emmy, and Chase and Faye will be involved in that. So we'll. we'll, we'll go back to that, uh, go back into the mountains with them. Um, I'm also self-publishing the next Rock Chick next month. I know so many people that are going to be happy to hear yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I, I hated to write it because I love that series. It's very, very special to me. Indy lived in my house. Ava lived in the, in this place I rented. And um, it's, uh, I have a lot of people that I love that I built characters on. And so it was really hard to write the finale of that. And also, it's it's a um, such a beloved series. I wanted mm -hmm. to make sure that it was something that people would just be like, yeah, she did it. <laughs> um, and and um, so there was a lot of pressure as well. Mm -hmm. But I love it. I really, I'm. Just I can't wait to unleash it. It's, I'm very, very excited. I love about how you next say month. unleash because it really, with your books, it really is. <laughs> yeah. It is an unleashing. Yeah. <laughs> Just let it burst out there. So yeah. And then, then, then you know, I have a lot of other series I need to write for. I need to write my fantasy series and my Berg series and um, my three series. And I will be doing more chaos. And there's a couple more Colorado mountains and some unfinished heroes to come out. So I hope to, you know, it, um, this fall and winter. Just write, just write all the way into the new year and just have a bunch of books just ready to roll next year. Well, I will be the first one in line to get those. Thank you so much for well, talking with me today. Thank you for having me. This has been fun. Yeah, it's been very fun. And I was going to say, like, I've been offered interviews from you before and I, I haven't taken it up because I, I was like, I, I'm not sure if I could literally sit oh. beside her. And you are just, you've been so wonderful. Thank you so much. Oh, well, thanks for having me.